Premier is still the industry standard for a number of reasons, but as popular as it is, I still come across so many editors who just don't know the full potential of this amazing software. So I wanted to take a minute and show you some of my favorite Premiere Pro secret features and how you can utilize this digital workspace in the most effective way possible. In this video, we're gonna take a look at each of the most vital windows individually and explore some of the secret features that may help you out in your next edit. So let's start in the panel that we spend the most of our time in, and that's the timeline panel. So did you know that you could have multiple timelines open at once? Whether side by side or on top of each other, we call these pancake timelines, and they're crazy useful. Whenever I'm building out a new project, I like to have my selects over on the left and my first revision over on the right. And instead of having to copy and paste, you can actually just drag clips from one timeline to another, and Premiere automatically copies it for you. This feature is a total game changer, and I definitely recommend you giving it a shot. Okay, speaking of moving assets from one timeline to another, did you know that if you're copying and pasting clips, whatever layer is selected here on the left side of your timeline is where your clips will be pasted. This little hack gets crazy helpful when your timelines are getting a little messy and you want to control where things land a little bit better. If you want to find out more about a clip in your timeline, you can right click and choose reveal in project window. This lets you quickly locate and edit a file without ever having to dig around in the project window. If you're ever working with multiple aspect ratios or resolutions in a single timeline, instead of clicking each one and scaling them up or down to match, you can actually right click and select set to frame size. Choose this instead of scale to frame size so that it actually changes the scale properties of your clip and you can make adjustments later on. All right, let's look at the project window and dive straight into these next secret features. If you're anything like me when you're trying to create a new sequence, you probably have a small seizure when this window opens up. There's just way too many presets and settings to dive into, and one wrong choice can really negatively affect the way that your footage plays back or exports later on. So instead, try this. In the project window, just drag a clip to this icon right here. And just like that, Premiere will create a brand new sequence perfectly matching all the settings of your footage so you can jump into your project with full confidence that your frame rates, resolutions, aspect ratio, and color settings are all golden. Did you know that if you right click right here and choose metadata editing, you can customize what data you look at in the project window. Most of the time for me, I like this a lot cleaner than it comes by default. So let's go ahead and uncheck all this stuff. And then one thing that I like to add is seeing whether proxy files are attached. So we can just search proxy and then click this right here. And now everything that we don't want is gone and everything that we wanted to add is showing up right there. We can actually go back and we're gonna save this. And then since these are per project settings, if we ever start a new project, we can just go right in there again, load up our preset and boom. And finally, here in the bottom left, we actually have three different views that we can use in our project window. I always have it set to the list view by default, which keeps us a little bit more organized. But you can also choose to look at the thumbnail view or the freeform view, which is like the thumbnail view, but it lets you drag things more freely within the window. Let's take a look at the Program Monitor toolbar, which is fully customizable and has some really incredible hidden features. To customize, just click this plus sign right here, and you'll get access to all these buttons that you can drag over to your viewable toolbar. I like to make sure that these ones are always accessible. Guides can be really useful for setting up framing safe zones and keeping things centered and just making sure that things are nice and symmetrical. Okay, Multicam. More on this one later, but this is a crazy powerful tool that lets you view tons of cameras at once for live or multicam style edits. This button here lets you toggle your proxy files, which are essentially lower resolution files linked to your edits that allow your computer to handle things a lot faster. By toggling the global effects button, you'll turn off all of your effects in the timeline. So if your computer's starting to get bogged down and playback is a little choppy, or you just want to compare before and after of your color or your VFX, you can actually switch off all effects at once to just play the content back easily. This is the loop playback button, which is super helpful for editing social ads or short form looping content. Just set your in and out points in the timeline, and as soon as the playhead gets to the end of the clip, it will automatically cycle back to the beginning and loop playback. And finally, the snapshot button lets you export a full res still image from your video, which is super helpful for pulling out frames to post or you know, editing in Photoshop or whatever you need. Okay, onto the effects panel. And there are really just so many effects in here that I had to make a completely separate video to cover all the effects that I love to use the most. But the two more technical secrets that I wanted to show you from this panel are, did you know that you can create presets from your favorite effect settings? Let's say you wanted to have a red tint ready for all occasions, because who doesn't? And rather than making this edit every time, you can actually just save a preset that lives forever right in this effects panel. You can create presets for pretty much anything, including effects, 
scale properties, and more. And second, did you know that you can edit default transitions for both video and audio? And even more importantly, did you know that not all audio crossfades are created equal? Constant power is the default transition for audio, which is ideal for fading between two clips. But for fading out completely to zero, I found and tested that constant gain has a way better curve. So depending on where I am in the project, I often set constant power as my default transition to save time. But if I'm tweaking a lot of endings, I'll set my default transition to constant gain. Now every time I create this transition, it's the right one right off the bat. Onto the audio track mixer panel, and this one is really big. Did you know that you can import and add third-party audio plugins to use right here in Premiere Pro? To access this, click this little arrow up in the top left corner right here, and you get all these open spaces for audio plugins. Premiere comes with some great ones by default, but to take things to the next level, click into the audio panel and then select audio plugin manager. Here you'll be able to scan your computer for any third party VSTs or audio plugins that you've purchased. And now go back and you'll see them as options right here in your plugin selections. Double click again and you'll actually open up the full visual interface, letting you make all of your tweaks just like you would in Logic or anywhere else. This gives you insane ability to use tools like Dialog Denoiser, professional compressors and reverbs, and way more. Also, did you know that you can create bus effect or audio submix channels? Then you can mix EQ and compress each of these categories as one track, instead of having to stack dozens of effects over each track. To set this up, right click in the timeline, click add layers, and then down in audio submix tracks, just choose the amount of submix tracks that you want. Then back in the audio track mixer, you can assign each track to a submix channel and control those tracks together. These allow you to group audio tracks in your mixer and apply effects and presets to entire mix categories at once. That means you could have four voice tracks or 10 sound effects tracks or three music tracks or any combo of channels. And instead of having to manage each of these individually, you can mix them as groups by routing the tracks to the appropriate submixes. This is a game changer and it's absolutely insane. Definitely take advantage of this one. Now, it may not appear that there's a lot going on in the effect controls panel, but did you know that Premiere actually has a basic graph editor for the keyframes here? These let you adjust the velocity and ease of any basic animations without ever opening After Effects. Also, Premiere has a pretty fantastic masking tool that lets you easily create composites with either a square, circle, or custom shape mask using the pen tool. Combine this little tool with keyframes, and you'll get some really nice compositing options right here in Premiere. All right, now these next couple secrets are less about a specific panel and more about Premiere as a whole. So let's go back to our preferences window. And first under the auto save tab, let's change the setting that changes how often Premiere auto saves your project. This is typically set to around 15 minutes, but I really like choosing to auto save every five or 10 minutes so that if anything crashes, I know I won't have as much to redo. Another really big deal that so many people don't know about is the ability to edit your still frame duration. By default, it's set to 10 seconds, but I like to edit this down to just 10 frames. And finally, I've got our interface color, which lets you change how light or dark the Premiere window looks. And under labels, you can choose your label colors, which lets you change the default colors of the different types of clips in your timeline. Okay, I know that was a ton of stuff, but I really hope you found this useful. You know, Premiere is such a powerful tool when you know how to utilize all of its amazing features. As always, if you have any questions at all about this video, feel free to reach out. Uh, but until the next video, happy editing.